Hello everyone, it's Connor. I hope you all are doing well. A few weeks ago I made a video talking about Nick Fuentes and those who defended him from the consequences of his content, namely his ban. And in that video, I specifically focused on why it is so dangerous to defend him in the name of supposed free speech. However, throughout the course of the video, I paid particular attention to those who held the line for Fuentes, but not on the man himself. So today I intend to correct that mistake and explain why not only does Nick Fuentes not deserve the defenses he received, but also why he deserved to be banned. Also, a bit of a content warning since this is Nick Fuentes, there will be some elements of racism that I have to show in this video. With that out of the way, let's get into the background of this entire affair. Nick Fuentes was banned several weeks ago from Twitter after years of using the platform to promote his far-right content. The ban came after the Anti-Defamation League released an article detailing his many indiscretions. Now, it is hard to know whether or not the ADL is the reason for his ban, but ultimately, Fuentes' content is the issue at hand. After his ban, there were a lot of people who went out of their way to defend him, even though his ban was far from unexpected. If anything, Fuentes' ban should have come a lot sooner. He routinely violated terms of service and promoted far-right propaganda, including denying the Holocaust in direct opposition to Twitter's hate speech policy. That. Max says, if I take one hour to cook a batch of cookies and Cookie Monster has 15 ovens, working 24 hours a day, every day for five years. How long does it take Cookie Monster to make six million batches of cookies? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> Certainly, uh... <laughs> oh, no, no. It doesn't really sound correct to me. Wait a second. It takes one hour to cook a batch of cookies, and you have 15 ovens, pr probably in four different kitchens, right? Doing 24 hours a day, every day for five years. How long would it take you to make six million? Hmm, I don't know. It certainly wouldn't be five years, right? Uh, the math doesn't seem to add up there. The math doesn't quite seem to add up there. I don't think you'd result uh, in six million, maybe two hundred to three hundred thousand cookies. And I think the Red Cookie Association said something like that. Probably two hundred to three hundred thousand cookies baked. Probably. If someone repeatedly violates the agreed upon rules, they get punished. It is that simple. If Twitter or any other platform turned a blind eye to hateful comments on their site, they would be sending a clear message that they don't consider a consistent application of their self-proclaimed rules to be important, something that would inevitably hurt their ability to enforce other rules that they have established. And when someone brings up the argument that someone should be banned, the response tends to be about the dangers of social media platforms regulating speech, the insinuation of which is that by banning someone like Fuentes, these companies gain more power over the public forum. At least one person has already made that argument to me. But the problem with that position is that it almost never considers the consequences of keeping these Nazis on the platform in the first place. Ironically, there is a danger to free speech by allowing Nazis like Nick Fuentes to remain on the site. If you put a bunch of white supremacists who believe in interracial marriages are disgraceful on a site, they will almost certainly infest it with vitriol and harassment. And on the vitriol front, Nick Fuentes has consistently shown that he is 100% opposed to interracial marriage of any kind. I'm a 22-year-old college dropout. I live stream a show on, on a homegrown platform, it used to be on YouTube, then DLive. Just giving political commentary, people send in questions and comments, I respond to them. And what is it, what is so bad that I've ever said? I'm against race mixing, I think, I don't want my wife to uh, have dated a black guy. A completely normal thing, by the way. Comple That's one of the worst things. He's against interracial marriage. Yeah, literally everybody was. Like, If people of color are regularly subjected to this kind of content, they're not going to feel comfortable being on whatever platform allows it. Who would? If there was an entire movement dedicated to restricting my rights based on my ethnicity or any immutable characteristics that I carry, I would do my damnedest to avoid it. Nobody deserves to be subjected to that. To be clear, I'm not suggesting that people of color would just run from this kind of thing. And there are plenty who fight back against this kind of content and regularly expose it. But no platform should be in such dire straits that people have to dedicate their time and energy to fighting back against this kind of rhetoric. It's incumbent upon these platforms to protect the free expression of as many people as possible. But that also means keeping dangerous content that would coerce other people off the platform away from its services. Even if we accept that private companies amount to public forums, Nick Fuentes' position on Twitter would be untenable. Fuentes has readily partaken in violent events such as the January 6th attack, which he readily endorses. When I was there in DC, outside of the building, and I saw hundreds of thousands of patriots surrounding the US Capitol building, and I saw the police 
retreating. And we heard that the politicians voting on the fraudulent election had scurried in their underground tunnels away from the Capitol. I said to myself, this is awesome. The endorsement of a violent attempt to overthrow the election is reason enough to ban Fuentes, especially when Twitter's own policies explicitly state that this commentary is prohibited. And it should go without saying, but violent speech is not protected by the First Amendment. We can spend as much time as we like worrying about the dangers of corporate control of speech, and we should, but there is a serious problem with people like Fuentes receiving a pass for their behavior and the violent nonsense that they regularly promote. If we are serious about ending the violence that comes with fascist propaganda, then we have to cut them out. Thank you all for watching. Sorry about the depressing nature of the video and some of the prejudiced things that I showed in it, but I hope this will be the last time I have to talk about Fuentes and his prejudiced commentary. In lighter news, I will be making an AMA tomorrow Mark the 100 subscribers milestone thanks to you all. If you would like to ask me a question that you'd like me to answer on a video, please send it to my curious cat, which is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.